Voters across the state have important questions, and we're asking them. For the next hour, find out where the candidates stand on the issues that matter to you. Live from your local election headquarters in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, this is the Pennsylvania Attorney General Democratic Debate. Welcome to tonight's debate among the five Democrats who want to be the state's next top prosecutor. I'm your moderator, Dennis Owens, and those five candidates for Attorney General are former Bucks County Solicitor Joe Kahn, Delaware County District Attorney Jack Stolsteimer, former Philadelphia Chief Public Defender Keir Bradford Gray, former Auditor General Eugene DePasquale, and State Representative Jared Solomon. And tonight is the first televised statewide debate between these five candidates, broadcasting in all 67 counties on air and online. This is a chance for many of you at home to meet them for the first time and a chance for them to show you why they should earn your vote. Also, while you're hearing from them, we want to hear from you by following along and posting on social media using the hashtag AGDebatePA. We have lots of ground to cover, numerous candidates. As you can see, let's take a quick look at the rules. You'll each have 60 seconds to answer. If you're named in a meaningful way by an opponent, you'll get 30 seconds to respond at the discretion of the moderator. I may also ask for clarification. When your time is up, you will hear this bell. For now, that's our starting bell. Many Democratic voters may be wondering about your qualifications and electability. So let's begin there. Our order tonight was predetermined. We're going to begin with you, Mr. Khan. In 2017, you lost a Democratic District Attorney primary to Larry Krasner in Philadelphia. If the people in your region didn't vote for you, why should Democrats statewide? You have 60 seconds. Thank you, Dennis. First of all, thank you for having us here. This is a really important question because this isn't about winning just a Democratic primary, but about winning the general election. And this is a really, really tough election for Democrats to win. I've lived in Pennsylvania my whole life. Election after election, the Republicans have won the attorney general race. Only two Democrats have won it because they have painted the Democratic nominee as being soft on crime, being a career politician who can't be trusted to keep Pennsylvanians safe. Now, you're right. I started out most recently as the Bucks County solicitor where I defended our rights that are under attack and our next AG has to do that. But before that, I was a career prosecutor. Ten years as a federal prosecutor in the U.S. Attorney's Office, six years as an assistant district attorney before that. And I'm not only the most qualified person to run for this office, we are closing the enthusiasm gap that Democrats have to address all across Pennsylvania. We're going to win the AG's office and we're going to elect Democrats up and down the ballot. And that's why we have this amazing coalition of support with endorsements across Pennsylvania. Thank you very much. Mr. Stolsteimer, your campaign pitch is voters don't know Jack. Well, you tout 30% reduction in Delaware County's prison population. What do you say to voters who think that's dangerous? 60 right. seconds. Great. First of all, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Thank you, my fellow candidates uh, and for the members of the public for participating in the democratic process. Uh, anybody who would say that would be completely wrong. Uh, what we've done in Delaware County is balance criminal justice reform with public safety. What I've done, Delaware County, when I first ran for DA four years ago, had the only privately run prison in Pennsylvania. I led the effort to deprivatize that. Nobody's making a profit just simply for incarcerating our people in Delaware County anymore. We're investing those profits in the people who are incarcerated there and the people who work there. And we've also reduced that prison population, actually by about 40 percent right now, by keeping low-level offenders out of the criminal justice system and getting them the help they need to stay, stay into redemption. But what we've also done, uh, Dennis, you're going to hear a lot about this, is reduce the gun violence in the city of Chester. The only city in my county used to be the most violent small city in America, certainly the most violent small city in Pennsylvania. Over the last four years, by bringing the community and police together, we've reduced the number of shootings by 72 percent. The number of gun homicides are down by 68 percent. Thank you very much. Turning to Ms. Bradford Gray, your background is as a public defender. You are running to be the state's top prosecutor. Most people believe those are completely different skill sets. Why should voters elect for the first time in PA history a public defender as their AG? You have 60 seconds. Well, I'm running to be the people's lawyer, and that's what the attorney general is in every other state other than Pennsylvania. It is a one that protects people at their very basic needs, and it makes sure that not only do we take care of the people that are harming people on the street corners, but that we go after people in the boardroom. My vantage point allows me to bring more people into protections of that office, and my legal acumen allows me to do it well. I have represented people in the state and federal system, which shows I have what it takes to go against well-resourced systems. I want to target crime where it needs to be, and I have the ability to do it fair and final. 
and I have the opportunity to allow make and make sure that women have very protected rights in their reproductive systems. I am so I'm so happy that people are able to sign on or or, or uh, uh, help with it in. Um, I apologize, and help with reproductive rights, but I am reproductive rights. And one of the things that I want to do is make sure that I show that no one can fight for a woman better than a woman. Thank you very much. 60 seconds to you, Mr. De Pasquale. You were a state representative and an auditor general, ran unsuccessfully for Congress, now running for attorney general. What do you say to critics who label you as a professional office seeker? 60 seconds. Dennis, I've run statewide twice, and I've won twice, including once when Trump was on the ballot. And why was I able to win? Because people know my record of fighting for Pennsylvania. It was my investigation that found over 3,000 untested rape kits. For working hard, I brought justice to victims. It was my investigation that found 58,000 unanswered phone calls at the child abuse hotline. Any single one of those calls could have been life or death for a child. But it wasn't enough for me just to find that problem. We traveled to every county in the state to make sure our children were better protected. And people know I know struggle. I had a brother with muscular dystrophy. Because of that, we never had health insurance because he had a pre-existing condition. When he passed away from complications, the bills kept coming for the funeral even after he passed away. Let me tell you something, Dennis. People know I've got the spine to take on big corporations, big insurance companies, and to run complex investigations. And that's what I'll do as your attorney general. Thank you. Mr. Solomon, 60 seconds. You're not only running for attorney general, you're also simultaneously running for your state house seat in Philadelphia. A lot of good government activists say candidates should, quote, run for one at a time. What do you say to that? Thank you, Dennis. Good evening. My name's Jared Solomon. I'm a state representative. I was raised in a working class neighborhood, decided to take on corrupt politicians to make my neighborhood better. I then went to Harrisburg, took on special interests and wrote tough ethics laws and protected us from Trump Republicans who were threatening our, our, our abortion and voting rights. I want to be your next attorney general because I want to protect our fundamental rights. To your question, Dennis, I love serving my neighborhood. We've taken my community and we brought it back. It was a neighborhood that had been left behind, forgotten, like so many neighborhoods that dot Pennsylvania, rural Pennsylvania, urban and suburban. I, I want to continue the work both in my community and I'll be able to do that in a, on a bigger level by ensuring safety and security, not just in Northeast Philadelphia, but throughout our Commonwealth. Thank you very much for that. We're gonna now move to the important issue of crime. According to the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency, murder and manslaughter cases in Pennsylvania increased nearly 77% from 2013 to 2022. Anecdotally, we're hearing people have stopped visiting Philadelphia altogether for fear of its crime. We're gonna begin with you, Mr. Stolsteimer, 60 seconds. You're the district attorney in neighboring Delaware County. You've no doubt seen it. What is causing it? And how would you as AG fix it? 60 seconds. Great question. A lot of the violent crime we're seeing driven on our streets is driven by the fact that we have easy access to firearms from people who should not have them. I'll give you an example of what just happened recently in Delaware County. I just recently had to charge a 15-year-old juvenile with killing another 15-year-old juvenile by using a ghost gun, a gun without a serial number that is untraceable. We have way too many people. We also had a massacre in Delaware County recently. In the last month, I've had three police officers shot in the line of duty. Uh, we need to stop the easy access to firearms, not from the people who have the right to have them, but from the people who don't. Uh, I've been spending my entire career as a federal prosecutor and now as district attorney trying to stop the guns on our streets. We're making real progress in the city of Chester, as I mentioned earlier. 72% reduction number of uh, shootings over the last four years, 68% reduction in number of gun homicides. Size. We can't arrest our way out of these problems. We have to bring the community and police together and find those common ground solutions. Turning to you, Ms. Bradford Gray, you were the chief public defender in Philadelphia. From your perspective, what do you see as the root cause of violent crime and how would you as Attorney General fix it? 60 seconds. Thank you for that question. So I have really good insight in terms of how people get their guns and I do agree with Jack. They are too easily accessible, but there are a lot of people that have not paid their fair share of the harms that they created. 
We need to make sure that we go after gun retailers and suppliers and hold them to the same standards of scrutiny as we do people on the street corner making stupid decisions. We need to make sure that retailers and suppliers are following common sense gun laws where they are not doing background checks or not following the transfer of the sale. We need to hold them to accountability because access allows, allows people who cannot have them to go into these stores and buy guns and everyone turns a blind eye. We also need to push back on gun manufacturers and have them put in more technology to help police solve crimes. Because truth be told, 70% of these shootings are not even entering our systems. If we push back on gun manufacturers, asking them to include more forensic technology, such as micro stamping, where there's DNA for bullets, we will help law enforcement officers stop to mop the floor while we refuse to fix the leak. I want to be the attorney general that does that. Thank you. Mr. D. Pasquale, how would you address violent crime across Pennsylvania as AG? You have 60 seconds. Everywhere I go in this state, people want safer communities. And that's something I will deliver as your attorney general. Look, we clearly have to get guns out of the hands of bad people, and we have to hold the dealers accountable. But one of the issues I want to make sure we also address is the issue of mental health. Following the shooting at Stillman Douglas, I led the school safety task force all over our state, meeting with kids, students in every single part of our commonwealth. They are screaming out for more mental health help. We also need to have red flag laws and enforce those laws. When someone is a danger to themselves and the community, we need to get that gun out of the hands of that individual. That is a way that we can make sure our community is safer. And another part, I don't want to lose sight of this. We have to make sure we have a good education system in Pennsylvania. We need to give every single kid equal opportunity to quality education. Right now, our school funding formula has been ruled unconstitutional. As your attorney general, I'll fight to make sure that we have a fair system that is constitutional that gives every kid a fair shot. Turning to you, Mr. Solomon, you represent Philadelphia. What do you believe is behind its crime, and how would you as attorney general address it? You have 60 seconds. Thank you, Dennis. What I'm already doing, which is working in a collaborative way with my colleagues and Democratic leadership to finally move common sense gun reform, like reducing high capacity clips, red flags law laws, and the, an assault weapons ban. That's step one. But also, let me tell you about what I'm doing in Northeast Philadelphia. We have taken a broad, expansive view of what safety means. It means enforcement, investment, and protection from special interests. On the enforcement side, we've changed the way we do enforcement by locating a mental health provider by, a, by our new police department to make sure people are getting the diversionary programs they need when they present with a mental health issue. Secondly, we're investing in our communities, bringing back business corridors and making sure we're bringing youth and police together in partnership. Lastly, uh, to make sure we protect our, us from special interests, we are investing money into the Gun Violence Task Force, $2.5 million per year to ensure that we get guns off of the streets. Thank you very much. Turning to Mr. Khan, you have 60 seconds. What is the cause of violent crime in your view? And as Attorney General, how would you deal with it? 60 seconds. Dennis, thank you for the question. It's the same question that the United States Attorney for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania asked me when I was asked to coordinate the violent crime impact team in the U.S. Attorney's Office 17 years ago when we saw an escalating and alarming rate of gun violence in southwest Philadelphia and tried to figure out what can we do about it with the awesome power of a U.S. Attorney's Office. And what we realized is that a disproportionate amount of the gun violence was being committed by a small group of people. We took a step back and did what we do every time we do great things in government. We brought people together and we figured out a solution. And the solution was focusing on a small group of people that were causing all of the violence and intervening with the power of the U.S. Attorney's Office, but not being happy with just a couple of headlines and throwing handcuffs on a few people. Making sure that we then use the power of our office to break up gun trafficking rings, to shut down gun shops, to solve uh, cold case homicides that had uh, denied justice for, for the survivors and, and the families of murder victims. That's the same kind of approach that I had 17 years ago that I'm going to bring as our next Attorney General. Thank you very much. They're one of the most polarizing issues in America today. However, Pennsylvania's Constitution is, as you all know as lawyers, very protective of gun rights, even more so than the U.S. Constitution. We're going to begin with you, Ms. Bradford Gray. 60 seconds. You said you love what New York Attorney General Letitia James has done with gun laws in New York. Specifically, which of her policies would you like to see enacted in Pennsylvania? 60 seconds. 
Well, I love the fact that she's going after the big manufacturers and asking them to be more responsible with their, with their product. They have been held to no account, even though they make billion do billions of dollars a month selling their product and pushing it through the streets, exploiting communities, and not really caring whether or not they end up in the wrong hands. One of the things we need to do as attorney generals is expose how much of the burden that Communities and municipalities are, are suffering while the people in the big boardrooms are making millions and millions of dollars off the backs of us. We have to make sure that we're understanding how to use the law creatively to make sure that they do more to help us in terms of allowing police departments to have the technology and to have the resources that they need in order to solve crimes. These crimes are being committed by guns quickly. Police can't get there fast enough. And what they need, if they're not connected to the community, they need the ability to prosecute, but also to follow the evidence that is allowed to be traced by new technology that can be infused in gun manufacturers' products. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. De Pasquale, 60 seconds. Do you support any gun control measures to improve public safety? And if so, how do you square that with the state constitution? Dennis, I've seen firsthand what happens to a victim of gun violence. My dad was wounded in Vietnam, shot twice in the right leg, once in the left. That eventually led to him being prescribed painkillers that led to an addiction of 30 years and him being incarcerated for it. The ramifications of people that are shot and wounded and even killed by gun violence is devastating, obviously, to those individuals and their families, and more needs to be done. Look, I've taken the position that no civilian should have access to military-style weapons. We also need universal background checks, and we need red flag laws to get the guns out of the hands of dangerous individuals. We also need more mental health resources so we don't have kids, young people, taking on tragic episodes in schools where they're shooting up their schools because they're crying out for help. We need to do more to protect our communities from gun violence, at the same time protecting people's Second Amendment right. We can do both, and as Attorney General, I'll make sure we do both. Mr. Solomon. 60 seconds. You've called for a ban on assault weapons and stronger red flag laws. How do you respond to critics who say they're not constitutional? Of course they're constitutional. And we finally are making progress, Dennis. After 13 years of Republicans blocking every common sense gun legislation, we need to change our laws in Pennsylvania. But let's just talk a moment about the bigger issue, what we, what we need to do as, attorney, as, as your next attorney general. I've taken on these big, big fights. As a securities and antitrust lawyer, I've taken on the biggest corporate cheats out there. And it, when it comes to making sure we, we make our community safe, we need to take on the ghost gun manufacturers head on. Mm -hmm. I've done this work time and time again. I will make sure to make our community safe by taking on gun manufacturers, getting illegal guns off of our streets. Mr. Kahn, turning to you, do, do you support any gun control measures? And if so, how do you balance that with the state constitution? 60 seconds. Yeah, the same way we did it before. I mean, the reason we don't have a federal assault weapon ban isn't because it violated the Pennsylvania constitution. It's because career politicians in Washington couldn't renew the law that kept Pennsylvanians and the rest of the, the country safe from these very dangerous weapons of war. But let's get back to the issue of what we're running for, which is attorney general. We're not running to be legislatures. We're running to make sure that we use an office that uniquely can provide leadership for all of Pennsylvania. And I'm going to use my experience as a career prosecutor in the district attorney's office and the U.S. attorney's office to not only set a good example for all of Pennsylvania, to show the legislature that even when we enforce the laws in the books, we still need reform. We still need municipalities like Philadelphia to pass common sense gun reforms that address the problems in their communities. But at the same time, working collaboratively with 67 district attorneys across Pennsylvania. You know, in Bucks County, where I was a Democratic solicitor and we had the only Republican DA in the Southeast, we formed an historic partnership to take on consumer protection. I will work with anyone from any party on these issues, and the DAs are going to be part of that solution. Thank you. Mr. Stolsteimer, should there be tougher restrictions on firearms, and how do they pass? constitutional muster. You have 60 seconds. Sure. They do pass constitutional muster, of course, depending upon the legislation we're talking about. And there are some legislative things 
like banning ghost guns that I think would be helpful to the situation, the problems we're seeing with violent crime in Pennsylvania. But let me be clear, as a chief law enforcement officer of the fifth largest county in Pennsylvania, I think the actual solution to this problem is bringing law enforcement and the community together. We are not going to pass legislation to end the gun violence problem. We're not going to arrest our way out of it either. We need to work together because every community in Pennsylvania has a gun violence problem. Whether it's in rural areas where gun suicides are off the hook and we need mental health services and we need more gun safety uh, initiatives going on, or whether they're in more urban or suburban communities like mine or like the city of Philadelphia. As I mentioned several times, what we've done in the city of Chester can be replicated throughout Pennsylvania. It used to work in the city of Philadelphia as well when Seth Williams was the district attorney of that city, and I think it will work in Pittsburgh with Attorney General uh, Michelle Henry working with Stephen Zappala. I think we can take a holistic approach and end gun violence in our lifetime. Thank you very much. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, the impact of illegal drugs, which we've started to talk about, and addiction. Stay with us. And welcome back to our Democratic Attorney General debate. This next question comes from longtime political reporter John Delano at KDKA in Pittsburgh. Hey, thank you, Dennis. Always good to be with you. Good evening, candidates. Most of you live in the Philadelphia area. One has lived in the Harrisburg area for years until recently moving back to Pittsburgh. Pennsylvania has many statewide issues, like opioid overdose deaths, 23,000 in the last five years, says the health department. Given your local roots, how would you combat both state and regional issues like drugs in our communities? Our thanks to John. We're going to begin with Mr. De Pasquale. You're the guy he was referring okay. to from the <clears throat> central part of the state moving west. As attorney general, what would be your first step to combat the issue of drugs in our communities? You have 60 seconds. The battle against addiction is personal to me. So I talked about earlier, my dad was wounded in Vietnam. That led to a 30-year battle with addiction, eventually a 10 and a half year federal prison sentence. I would be shocked if there isn't a single family in Pennsylvania that hasn't been impacted in some way by drug addiction. Now, as Auditor General, I took this issue head on. I investigated every single drug rehabilitation program in our state to find out what worked and what didn't so we can make sure our resources went to the right place. Now, as Attorney General, we get to oversee the opioid settlement dollars. This is a once in a generation opportunity to make sure we get this right. I will use my experience 
as Auditor General, making sure those resources get to the right place, making sure insurance companies cover what they need to cover, and at the same time, never losing sight on this. Be not because of it just happened to me, but happening to so many Pennsylvania families. Addiction must be taken on head on. Thank you. Mr. Solomon, you've called the opioid epidemic the top public safety crisis in Pennsylvania. As Attorney General, how would you tackle it? 60 seconds. I'm going to take on the opioid manufacturers head on. Manufacturers like Johnson & Johnson knew that they were peddling these drugs, pharmacists were raising the red flags, and they continued to pad their own pockets as addiction and deaths rose. The Colorado model works. The Attorney General in Colorado said, we're going to do things differently. We're going to work on a collaborative, collective way. So what he did is a community-based approach. Instead of a bunch of nonprofits all playing to their own metrics, driven by their own board's priorities. He chose one community-based nonprofit within each neighborhood. And through that collective approach, he's been able to bring down opioid addiction in Colorado. We need that model in Pennsylvania. Thank you. Turning to you, Mr. Kahn. What would be your first step in addressing Pennsylvania's drug issue? You have 60 seconds. Well, as you might imagine, this is personal for me, too. Uh, I never met my grandfather who suffered from addiction his whole life, uh, and it, he lost his life when my mom was 10 years old. Um, so you can, might imagine I was pretty angry when I found out that these companies were lying about their opioids uh, and seeing an, an epidemic across America as an opportunity to make profit. That's why I shifted gears from being a prosecutor to civil justice. I went after those companies, Johnson & Johnson and Purdue Pharma, to hold them accountable, not just for the eastern part of the state, but I represented counties across America. And it's not just holding them accountable and making sure that they, they pay a price, but it's about getting resources for communities, which is what the attorney general can uniquely do. Now, that Johnson & Johnson case, it settled, and the Attorney General was instrumental in that. And I couldn't be more proud that of all the counties in Pennsylvania, Bucks County is the largest county to receive a full share of that settlement, which we use to invest in solutions like our co-responder program, making sure that when police officers respond to someone in a mental health or substance abuse crisis, they have someone trained to help them de-escalate things. That's the kind of vision that I bring to this office as your next Attorney General. Thank you. Mr. Stolsteimer, you've highlighted successful litigation against opioid companies that brought millions millions of dollars into Delaware County. Do you see that as the best way to confront the crisis? You have 60 seconds. It's one of the many ways we need to confront the crisis. So I did sue the opioid, opioid distributors on behalf of the people of Delaware County and the people of this Commonwealth. The Attorney General and the District Attorney of every county has the same power under state's consumer protection law to hold corporate uh, cheaters accountable. Uh, I did that in Delaware County. We brought over $60 million home to help people with substance use disorder. Uh, and we're putting those programs in place as we speak. I also decriminalized the personal possession of marijuana in Delaware County. Nobody's getting arrested for having a couple of joints on their person anymore. And at the same time, I've reinvigorated our Narcotics Countywide Task Force, which is run under the authority of the State Attorney General, but I am the commander of. In Delaware County, in 2022, we took $20 million, a new record for us, of fentanyl, this absolute poison that is killing people with a opioid addiction, a, a substance abuse disorder, they are getting killed and victimized by the people who are selling fentanyl. We are taking those people off the street using every tool in the toolbox. We have got law enforcement doing whatever it takes to keep people safe. Thank you. Turning to Ms. Bradford Gray, what would be your first step in addressing the drug crisis in Pennsylvania? You have 60 seconds. Well, I agree with every, everything everyone said about who is responsible for this thing. And I've seen up close and personal drugs rip communities and families apart. But I've also seen a selective way that we look at equitable distribution of supports. We have a lot of money that has come in through the opioid settlement. However, it's not getting to every community. We need to make sure communities that are vulnerable get the same opportunities for supports and for therapy that anyone else gets. I have now looked at the lawsuit that the Department Department of Justice has brought down on our Pennsylvania courts who are not giving people in jails the opportunities to get insurance coverage for their addiction problems. Why is that? We need to make sure that people who are more desperate are getting the resources they need so they are better for their communities and they're sucking the life out of our community. This is an issue of equity as well as it is of making sure that we proactively go after the people that are causing this carnage and destruction. We have to make sure that we are equitably distributing the resources because if not, there are some people that are always going to be treated disproportionately. 
Thank you. Philadelphia District Attorney Larry Krasner pledged not to prosecute simple drug offenses such as marijuana possession. Mr. Solomon, we're going to begin with you. 30 seconds now, though. Do you agree with that position for low-level possession? Absolutely. Long overdue. Uh, when it comes to our judicial system, our DAs, our Attorney General, we, we need to make sure that we temper our judicial system with a sense of mercy. And that was a long overdue initiative that Mr. Krasner took. I, need, I think we need to do more of that by inject, injecting a sense of equity into our judicial system. Quick follow-up, do you support the legalization of adult use cannabis? Absolutely, when it comes to prevention and treatment, we can use those dollars to push that money into our communities that are really hurting. Thank you very much. Mr. Khan, same question to you. As Attorney General, do you believe people should be charged for possessing marijuana? 30 seconds. No, absolutely not. And I say that not as someone who uses marijuana, but as a career prosecutor who understands that we need an office like Attorney General to focus on things that only the AG can focus on. That's the reason I'm calling for the creation of the first ever housing justice. Those are the kind of fights that we need in the Attorney General's office, not prosecuting marijuana offenses. And I know as a prosecutor that the marijuana laws have not been enforced equally. The likelihood of someone having a marijuana conviction is not based on how often they use marijuana, but the zip code they lived in. That's not justice. That's not what our Constitution requires. Quick follow-up. The governor wants recreational marijuana legalized. Do you support that? Yes. Turning to Mr. Stolsteimer, you are a district attorney. What is your approach in Delaware County for small amounts of marijuana? You have 30 seconds. Yeah, as I've already mentioned, I did decriminalize marijuana for personal possession in Delaware County. People aren't getting arrested for that anymore. They might get an ordinance from the local township for a, under a health code violation. We're not arresting people for that. Do you support uh, legalization of adult use marijuana? I do. I think there needs to be guardrails. There needs to be careful legislation. The THC level that is in the marijuana that's on the street today is not the same as when you and I were young, but we need to be sure that we do it smartly and not just to make money for the Commonwealth. Ms. Bradford Gray, should people be charged for possessing small amounts of marijuana? 30 seconds. No, they should not. We should focus our resources on more major crimes that are more debilitating, but also people who have records for marijuana convictions should have their opportunity to be restored, especially since people are in the business of making millions of dollars by selling it. It is now an equitable approach that we need to fix and we need to make sure that we're righting the wrongs of the past. Do you support the legalization of uh, recreational marijuana? Yes, I do, because one of the things I think we need to do is tax it and use it for good. And at, at least if you regulate it, you know what's in it. It's not black market. Fentanyl is not going to be able to get into it. And we'll have the ability to understand what, in fact, is happening in our communities. Mr. De Pasquale, what is your stance? Should people be facing jail time for possessing marijuana? You have 30 seconds. In 2017, I became the first statewide elected official to call for the regulation and taxation of marijuana. We would bring in revenue from it, and it would actually be a safer product. But I've also pledged that as Attorney General, I'm going to make sure we have a fair justice system. We know that enforcement of marijuana laws have not been fair. If you're of high economic means, you never got prosecuted for this, whereas if you were poor or a person of color, you were much more likely to get prosecuted. So we need to change the laws to make sure we have a fair justice system. We should regulate and tax marijuana. 15-second follow-up. We talked about the ravages of drugs. Do you, are you not concerned that legalizing that recreational marijuana would lead to that? No, I am not. Look. The myth of the 70s that this is a gateway drug is just that, a myth. We need to regulate and tax marijuana. Okay, I want to thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will pivot from crime to consumer protection, which is an important part of the Attorney General's office. Stay with us.
Democratic debate for Attorney General. We are turning now to consumer protection. The Pennsylvania Attorney General's office received thousands of complaints on Ticketmaster, especially regarding junk fees. The issues also are a concern for uh, hotel rooms and plane tickets. Current Attorney General Michelle Henry has led a multi-state effort to outlaw junk fees. Mr. Khan, we turn to you first. As Attorney General, would you continue that effort? And does the government have a role in what is otherwise a private transaction? 60 seconds. Yeah, we need to do more. I mean, this is a good indication of how much growth there is for Pennsylvania to get more involved in consumer protection issues. You know, we're one of only two states in the country that doesn't have an antitrust law. And that's really what has led me to step up for this office. After 16 years as a criminal prosecutor, I started a new chapter in civil justice. Um, it's the reason that I started going after pharma companies. Uh, we went after predatory lenders. And that work brought me to Bucks County, where for the first time ever, the county solicitor began to oversee consumer protection in Bucks County. That's the reason that the only place in Pennsylvania where used car buyers now have a Bill of Rights is in Bucks County. That's the reason that the first county in America to go after Facebook and TikTok and Snapchat for targeting kids was Bucks County. Now, this is, these are the kind of fights that we need attorneys general leading the efforts on, and these are exactly the kinds of cases that we can expect more of when I'm the next AG. Mr. Stolsteimer, turning to you, what will be your approach as the Attorney General toward junk fees? You have 60 seconds. Well, first of all, consumer protection is one of the most important things the Attorney General does. District attorneys share that same power under Pennsylvania law, and I've been using it in Delaware County. You heard earlier I sued the opioid distributors for bringing tens of millions of dollars home to help people with substance use disorder in Delaware County. I also started the first environmental crimes unit in any DA's office day one when I became district attorney. I'm using that uh, unit to sue big chemical companies as we speak for the PFAS, the forever chemicals they put in your drinking water, your bodies, uh, and in concentrated amounts in firefighting foam our first responders have been using for years. Uh, we need to do more on consumer protection than we've done. I applaud Michelle Henry for taking this initiative on the junk fees. We want to continue to do this work, and I will do this work to protecting consumers every single day when I am your next Attorney General. Ms. Bradford Gray, what should the Attorney General's office be doing in regards to junk fees? You have 60 seconds. Thank you. So the consumer protection area is one I'm very excited about. I know many people are trying to have a fine and a hard time affording their lives. Life is expensive, and the Attorney General has a huge role to play in providing greater financial protections. Right now, the Senate, Bob Casey, has created an anti-price gouging bill, giving Attorneys Generals more opportunities to make sure that we protect people at the pump, at the cash register, at the grocery store, and everywhere else, like insurances and things that they need to live their everyday lives. If we can't help protect people, then who will? The people's lawyer and the people's law firm will make sure that we not only give people a voice, but we push back on businesses who take advantage of them and exploit them. Mr. De Pasquale, what steps would you take to limit or eliminate junk fees altogether for Pennsylvanians? You have 60 seconds. We've all had this happen to us before. You pick up your phone and you see the spam alert on your phone. I don't know about everybody else, but it ticks me off. We got to hold these creeps accountable. People across Pennsylvania have seen me take on tough fights, whether it's investigating the Marcella Shell drillers. That's just one area where I took on a powerful interest. And you got to hit these people where it hurts, in their wallet. And I want to be clear, we have strong consumer protection laws in Pennsylvania. And these creeps that are trying to prey on our seniors, prey on our young people, these social media companies that are preying on young women in particular, they need to be taken on head on. And I want to be abundantly clear with everyone out there. If I'm your attorney general, I'm coming after them. Mr. Solomon, 60 seconds. How would you work to reduce junk fees as attorney general? Well, I'm still waiting for my Taylor Swift ticket, so I'm very, <laughs> I'm very upset. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take them all on. I've done this as a securities and antitrust lawyer. And this gets us back to where we're comfortable in the Democratic Party, back to our roots of taking on the corporate cheats. We need to take on those hospital mergers, those vertical horizontal integrations that suppress wages hurt workers. We need to take on the big te tech companies who are trying to prey on our youth. We need to take on the pharmaceutical industry to make sure that we protect our most vulnerable, our seniors and our kids. The consumer protection function of the Attorney General's office is vast, and I will make sure to deliver a better quality of life by expanding the role of consumer protection when I'm Attorney General. Well, we have seen a rise in tech companies rolling out artificial intelligence products, um, but there's a real concern about a lack of guardrails in place for that. Already this year, Attorney General Henry has issued several warnings regarding AI, including impersonations of President Biden and concerns about election 
tampering. We're going to begin with you, Mr. Stolsteimer. 60 seconds. What is AI's greatest danger in your view, and how would you protect Pennsylvanians? Yeah, I barely understand artificial intelligence, to be honest with you, but what I do understand scares me. Uh, I remember reading recently an interview with uh, Henry Kissinger right before he died that he believes that the, most, the next five years are going to be the most dangerous years we've lived through uh, since before the, the run-up to the First World War. And the reason he's most concerned or was most concerned was because of AI, the weaponization of AI, what it can do both to our communities but also what it can do into mili military-grade weapons. So I think we need to be on the front lines as attorney generals working with legislators in the federal system to make sure that we actually regulate with people who know what they're talking about, what A can do to improve our lives and where we need to put barriers to keep ourselves safe. Ms. Bradford Gray, what guardrail should be in place to protect people from misinformation through artificial intelligence? You have 60 seconds. See, this is where we need to push back on the big tech companies a lot. We have to make sure that we're not only looking at the short-term goals, but the long-term goals and the long-term impacts that AI, as well as their product, that has created an addiction in teenagers. I'm a mother of two and I have lost the battle to social media. It is something that is really concerning to me and every parent, I'm sure, in the Commonwealth as to how to make sure that we protect our kids from the addictive nature and from the information that they receive. It is something that we have to make sure that we're vigilant in protecting our children's morality, but also their ability to grow into healthy young adults. I have been vigilant in talking about how the role of it, social media has played in our gun violence epidemic. It has allowed children to understand or be sensationalized with the fact that guns are something that are cool. These are things that we have to look at reeling in in some major ways, and attorneys generals are standing up, suing tech companies, making sure that their addictive qualities are, are reeled back in, and really come creating an understanding of what we want. Thank you, Mr. DePasquale. As attorney general, how would you protect consumers from the misuse of artificial intelligence? You have 60 seconds. AI and these social media companies, I'm very concerned about the threat to democracy they pose. When I was Auditor General, I investigated our voter registration security system to make sure that it was better protected. As a result, along with some good work from some other people, 2020 was the most secure election Pennsylvania ever had. But we know these threats aren't stopping. And as your Attorney General, I want to make it clear, I will get ahead of the curve on AI and these other social media companies to make sure that our democracy is protected. That's my biggest concern. We need to make sure that every voter that wants to vote and cast that vote has their vote count, casted, counted accurately. We also need to make sure that whoever gets the most votes is declared the winner and is the one that takes office. So my biggest concern when it comes to AI and social media is the threat they bring to, to democracy. Mr. Solomon, your website says you've always taken on the bullies, the scammers, the schemers, and the cheaters. <laughs> So how would you handle companies and bad actors using AI? You have, AI, you have 60 seconds. I don't like the bullies, the scammers, the schemers at all. And in this, this is a, a great example of really the expansive power of the Attorney General's office. So there's the stuff the Attorney General does every day, the statutory uh, interpretation, protecting agencies, environmental protection, securities, antitrust, and the like. But then there's how do we project our values? And it's usually through the task force model. So I would form a task force on AI, and I would bring subject matter experts in to explore what are the appropriate guardrails to erect, bringing in DAs, local law enforcement. And then I would, and I'm in a great position to do this, work with the legislature to move bills to the governor's desk. In a Republican legislature, got seven bills to the governor's desk, and I think it's really important when we're looking at establishing these guardrails, other pieces of legislation, we have someone who can actually get to the finish line and, and ensure that these issues become law. Mr. Khan, you've sued tech companies in the past. How would you address the emerging issue of AI as AG? 60 seconds. This is what the AG uniquely can do. You know, we have good people in the legislature trying to get this right, but they, can't, they cannot keep up with the rapid development of AI. And that's where we have seen time and time again, whether it's gerrymandering or fair funding, fair funding for our kids' schools. When you have attorneys with a vision and the leadership and the experience to get things done, you can provide that protection through court action. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to make sure that we not only protect Pennsylvanians from the, the threats to our election and to consumers, but to workers, where AI unchecked will eliminate jobs before we can even catch up to what the problem is. When I took on big tech, I was asked on CNN, isn't this David versus Goliath? 
with? Aren't you punching above, above your weight? And I was. And I brought along with me our, my Republican colleague, the district attorney, with me, and we took that fight on. And 40 states later joined the fight uh, with the attorney generals. We're going to work with attorney generals across the country on these tough issues, but Pennsylvania is going to be a leader. Thank you. We only have a few minutes left. We want to cover a few more topics, so we're going to do so in a rapid-fire round. Uh, so there'll be 15 seconds now for this. Uh, attorneys general get to shape the office. What would you prioritize? And by the way, we're going to begin with you, Ms. Bradford Gray. 15 seconds. I would want to. Oh. What, well, what would you, well, <laughs> what would you prioritize as AG that is currently not being prioritized? How would we know it's your office? 15 seconds. I would want to make sure people have access to the basic services that improve their quality of life. So I would make sure health care coverage and health care access is something that people are avail that is available to all people. I will also make sure that we provide the protections that people need and give them a right to have quality education and stable housing. Mr. D. Pasquale, 15 seconds. What would you prioritize as AG that's not being prioritized now? We have to protect our democracy first. We also have to make sure reproductive health and abortion access maintains. Beyond that, it'll be the environment. We have a constitutional right to clean air and pure water. I've taken on the drillers before. I'll make sure that we take on corporate polluters so that our water and our air are clean. Thank you, Mr. Solomon. 15 seconds. What would you prioritize that's not being prioritized right now in the office? In my office now, I am accessible. What I want to do is make sure there are many different avenues to me, ways to reach the attorney general. I want to be a community-based attorney general that really works to drive better quality of life in our neighborhood and investment in our communities. How would a Mr. Khan attorney general's office be different from what's now? 15 well, seconds. If you want to pick one issue that there is not a long line of politicians signing up to, to address, not just in the attorney general's offices, but everywhere, it's the housing crisis. And in Pennsylvania, that impacts urban rural and suburban communities. We are going to create the first ever housing justice unit to use the awesome power of this office to address this problem. Thank you, Mr. Stolstammer. 15 seconds. What would you prioritize that's not being prioritized now? The same things I prioritize as the Deputy District Attorney of Delaware County. Uh, environmental crimes, uh, protecting a woman's right to choose, stopping wage theft, and just taking a holistic and smart approach to stopping the gun violence that is racking too many of our communities. Okay, moving on. Republican Treasurer Stacey Garrity has banned the use of TikTok on state treasury devices. The Senate unanimously passed a bill to prohibit the use of TikTok on all state devices and networks. In 15 seconds, do you support such a ban? Why or why not? Mr. DePasquale, we're going to begin with you. 15 seconds. The answer to that is yes. It's a threat to our country. It's a threat to our security. And it's certainly a threat to the mental health of our young people. We've got to put a stop to this. Mr. Solomon, 15 seconds. Do you support the banning of TikTok on state devices? Absolutely. They're the worst of the worst. This turns us inward. Uh, they are preying on our young people. They're increasing the mental health crisis. And yes, I would support it. Mr. Khan, 15 seconds. Do you support banning TikTok? I do. Last year when I stood with Republicans and Democrats making Bucks County the first county in America to sue TikTok for what they were doing to our kids, we also announced a ban on TikTok in Bucks County government. It cannot be trusted, and we need to make sure that we protect Pennsylvanians. Mr. Stolsteimer, same question to you, 15 seconds. My two 18-year-old children are going to kill me for this answer, but I agree. <laughs> we have to ban TikTok. Uh, it has no value. Ms. Bradford Gray. I believe we have to ban TikTok, and especially on state devices, if they're able to cause threats to us that are unreversible. So these are the things that I think that have been looked at, and this is why the ban is coming, on, coming about now. The threats to us in, in terms of the TikTok opportunity to get into our, our, our resources is too big. Next question, we're going to begin with you, Mr. Solomon. Currently in Pennsylvania, abortion legal through 23 weeks. With a Democratic governor and divided legislature, that doesn't figure to change anytime soon. In 30 seconds, actually, what is the role of the attorney general, if any, in protecting a woman's right to choose? Mr. Solomon. Dennis, it's what I'm doing right now. Uh, I propose the Women's Health Care Compact uh, that bring, pr creates a bulwark of like-minded states, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Maryland, to push back against Trump-style attorneys general who are trying to use the subpoena power and discovery to get at women who are trying to, and women and their families who are coming to Pennsylvania to, to secure safe abortion rights. I will make sure to never prosecute a woman or their families who are trying to seek abortion access in Pennsylvania. Mr. Khan, turning to you, 30 seconds. Uh, your thoughts on the Attorney General's role in protecting a woman's right to choose. Dennis, when I was a little boy, I learned about the word abortion from my mom, who was an ER nurse, who taught me about a young woman whose life 
it was lost because she didn't have access to safe abortion care. And that's the reason I didn't flinch when I was targeted for being the only county solicitor in Pennsylvania who used the power of my office to defend access to the abortion pill. And in my view, the Pennsylvania Constitution guarantees reproductive rights, not just to women who live in Pennsylvania, but those who are fleeing to Pennsylvania from these lunatics in places like Alabama who are going to be chasing them down when they're coming to Pennsylvania for safe harbor. We're going to protect them too. Mr. Stolsteimer, 30 seconds. The role of the Attorney General in protecting a woman's right to choose. Dennis, my mother came to this country as a 15-year-old Ukrainian refugee from a Nazi slave labor camp. I never got a chance to meet her because she died in childbirth when I was born. This is a personal issue to me. That's why Attorney General Josh Shapiro and I filed a legal document when Dobbs was before the U.S. Supreme Court trying to take on that decision and stop it from happening. After that decision came down, I took a public pledge in Delaware County as the chief law enforcement officer. I will never prosecute a woman for violating what I know to be her constitutional right. Ms. Bradford Gray, the role of the Attorney General in protecting a woman's right to choose. 30 seconds. This is near and dear to me, obviously. As a woman, no one can fight for the rights of a woman like a woman. And I know as a woman of color, we are five times more likely to lose our lives during childbirth. This is something that I will vigorously fight against because I know that I don't want my daughter to live in a world that has less rights than I do. I will also protect a woman's right to have access to prenatal care because some of the things that are going wrong in these delivery rooms are the fact that they didn't have quality care to begin with. We need to make sure we right the wrongs of health care equity and African American women and young girls should have the ac access to health care that they deserve. Mr. D. Pasquale, 30 seconds. The role of the Attorney General. If you were Attorney General, how are you protecting a woman's right to choose? Reproductive health is important to me. Look, our family had to deal with an ectopic pregnancy. In the state of Oklahoma today, that could actually lead to jail time. That's just simply wrong. As, a, as Auditor General, I took on the fraudsters at Real Alternatives that were giving pregnant women basically lying and horrible information about what would happen to them if they actually had an abortion. Because of my work, Josh Shapiro, Governor Shapiro canceled their contract. That's the type of leadership I'll bring to make sure abortion remains safe and legal in Pennsylvania. Thank you both. Boy, this has been a fast hour. We now are going to go to closing set statements. You each have 30 seconds. The order has been predetermined. Closing statement, we're going to begin first with you, Mr. Solomon. 30 seconds. Thank you so much. My name is Jared Solomon. I want to be your next attorney general. We need an attorney general as Trump is the likely nominee. He doesn't just come alone. He brings all his special interests to Pennsylvania. We need a true fighter. I have fought for my neighborhood. I took on corporate cheats as a securities and antitrust lawyer, defended our country serving in the Army and National Guard. I went to Harrisburg, began to clean it up, and have protected abortion access and voting rights from Trump attacks. I'm Jared Solomon. I'd be honored to be your next Attorney General. Thank you. Turning to you, Mr. DePasquale, 30 seconds closing statement. The people of Pennsylvania know me. That's why they elected me twice, including once when Trump was on the ballot as Auditor General. They know my ability to take on tough fights and to win. Taking on tough investigations, cracking down on untested rape kits, better protecting our children. That's the type of leadership I'll bring as Attorney General. When it comes to protecting the people of Pennsylvania and fighting for them, I will give it everything I got. My name is Eugene D. Pasquale, and I want to be your attorney. Ms. Bradford Gray, 30 seconds, closing statement. Thank you. My name is Keir Bradford Gray, and I am running for your attorney general because I know what it looks like to protect people and use the resources of that office to bring more people into the protections of that office. I have been a fighter for people through state and federal systems, which shows I have what it takes to take on well-resourced systems. I have also been a transformational leader to make sure that I led systems and communities to better opportunities. I want to use this role and all it has to offer to make sure that people understand that the people's lawyer is here for them and I have the vantage point to get to the bottom of what's harming them. Mr. Stolsteimer, 30 seconds, closing statement. Thanks for your time tonight and thank you everybody for your time as well. Uh, this has been a great debate. Uh, my name is Jack Stolsteimer and I'm the elected district attorney of Delaware County. I am uniquely qualified both to win this election for Democrats but also to do this job because I do this work every single day in the Commonwealth's fifth largest county. Uh, if you want to learn more about my record, you've heard a lot about it, I hope, tonight in Delaware County. Check out our website, jackforag.com. Uh, I would be deeply honored and appreciative of your support and I look forward to being Pennsylvania's next Attorney General. Again, my name is Jack Stolsteimer and thank you. Mr. Kahn, 30 seconds closing statement. 
Thanks, Dennis. Across Pennsylvania, we've been building a coalition of support of folks that are diverse in race and geography and ideology, but agree that I am the Attorney General Pennsylvania needs to lead this office and to win this tough fight in, in November. One of the uh, most critical endorsements that we've received that I'm so proud of is Clean Air Action, which has described me as an environmental justice champion because I am going to fight for kids all across Pennsylvania to leave them with a safer world. And that's the reason I'm running. I'm running because of my kids. I'm going to build them a better world and a safer world, and I'm going to do that for all Pennsylvanians. I'm Joe Kahn. I want to be your next Attorney General. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us tonight. We do want to remind all the viewers that on Thursday, March 14th, we're going to have the Republican Attorney General candidates. These were the Democrats. Dave Sunday, Craig Williams, right here in our studio two nights from now at 7 o'clock. Before we go, here's a look at the deadlines you need to know to make sure your vote counts. Last day to register to vote, April 8th. You must be registered to cast a ballot, and only registered Democrats can vote for Democrats. Register Republicans for Republicans. The deadline to request a mail-in or absentee ballot is April 16th, one week before the election. Remember, county election office must have those ballots by April 23rd at 8 p.m. Uh, that's for mail-in. If you prefer to go in person, April 23rd is the date between 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. and the polls are open. Ladies and gentlemen, for a healthy democracy, there needs to be a good number of candidates. As you can see tonight, we have a good number in this race. Good luck choosing who you're going to vote for. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in two nights with the Republicans.